This was December the 6th. Fighting age males lined up as far as you can see. Bottom line is we're urging the president to get involved and fix this problem. Senator Murphy's a fine fellow, but it's never going to happen as long as Senator Schumer is in charge of these negotiations. We're going to have to get the President of the United States involved. He owes it to the American people to fix a broken border. And when I say broken, what do I mean? I mean really broken. In the last four days, we've had 40,000 illegal crossings. Two days ago was the highest on record. We're averaging for the last seven days 9,400 people. We're on track to 3.6 million <coughs> this year alone, 6 million up to date uh, when, since he's been president. Larger than 21 states. The threat levels that are all-time high, the uh, illegal crossings into our country are at an all-time high, and my Democratic colleagues are saying, what do we get to secure the border? You get a safer country. You're not going to get legalization of illegal immigrants in this deal. This is about securing our border so we can then help our allies. I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues. But this I cannot and I will not do. I will not go back to South Carolina and try to explain why I helped Ukraine, Taiwan, and Israel and did nothing to secure our own border. I will help all of our allies, but we've got to help ourselves first. Again, you don't need to change the law for this to stop. You need the president to use the tools available and change his policies. President Biden had a goal to prove to the American people he was not Donald Trump when it came to immigration and border policy. You have exceeded beyond your wildest imagination. How many Americans would love to have the border secured like President Trump was able to do it? You can do it. You have to want to do it. You have to choose to do it. So these negotiations need to change. The President of the United States should be involved. He is responsible for this situation more than any member of the House and the Senate. He is the Commander-in-Chief. And when it comes to securing our border, our Commander-in-Chief, Joe Biden, is AWOL. Senator Grassley. Like Senator Graham, my constituents ask, when are you going to do something about the border? As Senator Graham said, it's already against the law to enter our country without our permission. But we passed those laws, and they've been on the books for a long period of time. In turn, the president is the enforcer of the laws, and he has decided not to enforce these laws because he believes in an open border. And this is secure, has brought about a national security problem when you read regularly about 169, million, uh, 169 people on the uh, terrorist watch list that have entered the country, and those are the ones we know about because we, they're on record. And what I don't get about this whole thing is if you're on the terrorist watch list, you'd never get on an airplane to come into the United States so how can you fly to Mexico or however you want to get to Mexico, be on the terrorist watch list, and get into this country without being denied the same way you would be if you wanted to get on an airplane? So we have to do something about this, and it's up to the presidents to do it. But we need some policy changes that that's what this debate is all about. I'm really glad that all the people up here with me and people that aren't up here with me, one week after October 7th, we sent a letter to the President of the United States warning him about the fact that uh, there could be, uh, because of what happened in Israel, terrorist attacks was in the United States. I don't know whether he took that very seriously or not, but we know that we expected this to happen from the people that are on the terrorist watch list. We must secure the border. It's one of the top three things that the voters of this country are interested in. It's common sense. It's the law. The President of the United States, just like we have, have taken an oath to uphold the Constitution, and the President isn't doing that. Thanks, sir. We're going to do this by height. height. You're right. Sir, I only have you by half an inch. Yeah, I'm right behind. Thanks, Lindsay, and thanks for your leadership. 
what yesterday's vote um, should have made clear is that uh, Republicans are dead serious about solving Biden's border crisis as part of the national security, part and parcel of the national security uh, debate that we're having on the floor of the Senate right now. And as Lindsey pointed out, this was a policy choice. This administration made a clear choice when they took office to completely abandon and do away with the policies of the previous administration that were working at our southern border. So much so now that you have even you know people like Jay Johnson, who was the uh, Homeland Security Department Secretary under President Obama, said at the time that a thousand people a day would overwhelm the system and that he couldn't even imagine what 4,000 a day would look like. Well, now we're triple that. 10 to 12,000 people a day uh, these last few days are just absolutely overwhelming our system. And this is a huge national security uh, crisis for our country, which uh, Republicans are, as I said, dead set on solving. And we have put forward uh, proposals uh, that are meaningful and real and serious and uh, at getting at our border crisis. So far, Democrats have resisted. Uh, this president and Democrats here in the Senate have to get serious about fixing this or um, not only are we going to continue to face a, a major crisis, a national security crisis at our southern border, but we're not going to be able to deal with the other national security threats that we face around the world. The lights are blinking red. That's what Chris Ray said. The lights are blinking everywhere I turn. If that isn't a warning, I don't know what is. You got people pouring across that border every day, some of whom are on the terrorist watch list. This problem has to be solved. It's got to be solved now, and the Democrats need to get serious about working with us to make that happen. Well, it looks like uh, we've finally gotten uh, President Biden's attention. Seven million migrants across our borders since he became president. 1.7 million gotaways, people evading law enforcement up to who knows what. We know how many people were stopped on the terrorist watch list that Border Patrol intercepted, but we have no idea of the number of people who are on that watch list who are among those 1.7 million gotaways. And there's another number, 108,000. That's the number of Americans who died of drug overdoses, including fentanyl poisoning, last year alone. Fentanyl comes from Mexico. The precursors <coughs> come from China. And they're made to look like something relatively innocuous. And I've been to six different high schools where parents are grieving having lost their child to fentanyl poisoning. This is the number one cause of death for Americans between the age of 18 and 45. Another number I'll mention is 300,000. That's the number of unaccompanied children who have been placed with sponsors in the interior of the United States that the administration has lost track of. They can't tell you whether these children are going to school, whether they're being sex trafficked, whether they're being in, forced into labor in voluntary servitude. They don't know, and obviously they don't care. So those numbers I mentioned to you, <clears throat> President Biden has been unmoved to work with us to try to come up with a solution. But now we found something that uh, provides us the opportunity to force the administration to do something that they have been unwilling to do until this point. And we intend to do everything we can to make sure that these policies are put in place to stem the flow of illegal immigration in our country along with other, all the other uh, problems that go along with it. Legal immigration has been one of the greatest blessings that this country has ever experienced. Legal immigration, but President Biden has outsourced our immigration policy to the cartels who smuggle people by the, by the head for thousands of dollars and the drug cartels that took the lives of 108,000 Americans last year alone. Okay. Our nation faces several grave threats. We have Iran trying to kill American troops or blow up our ships every day in the Middle East. Radical Islamic terror groups like Al-Qaeda or ISIS, Hamas, Hezbollah threaten our people. Or rising, emboldened 
and aggressive Russia and China, but there is no more urgent threat to this nation than our wide open southern border. You've heard these numbers, they're astonishing. 10 to 12,000 people a day crossing our border with no right to be here. Just put that in perspective. Over 3.6 million people in a year, it'll probably be more than that since the numbers continue to increase. That is more than the entire population of the state of Arkansas. For that matter, it's more than the entire population of the state of Arkansas by Halloween. You can get a Vermont thrown in for Thanksgiving and Christmas as well. And it's not just the fact that that puts strain on jobs and wages for American workers or schools and hospital systems and housing, but hundreds and hundreds of those people are on the terror watch list or their so-called persons of concern that could be infiltrating our company, our country to commit mass casualty terror attacks against our people. And they are here not by accident, but because of Joe Biden's specific policy choices. Our border was closed the day Joe Biden took office. Now we have 12,000 illegal migrants crossing every day because he abuses our asylum laws, because he extends parole to vast groups of people as opposed to a case-by-case -case basis. Even the day-to-day -day tactical challenges, he won't let the Border Patrol defend themselves or defend what stretches of law there are from attack and from destruction. He turns a blind eye when the cartels are trafficking people across our border or setting up de facto travel agencies in the old world. That's why not just Republicans in Congress, but the American people <coughs> say Joe Biden has done a terrible job on our border. And they are tired of it, and they are demanding change. Now, as Senator Graham said, Joe Biden could change tomorrow. He could implement policies tomorrow that would not just substantially reduce, but almost entirely stop the flow of illegal migrants to include potential terrorists across our border. He has shown no willingness to do that because he has shown no willingness to show up to stand up to the radical left in his party. And if he is not willing to do that, then we will have to force him to do that. The Democrats in the Senate have not yet come to grips with that reality, that they are going to have to grant significant concessions on the border to pass the president's supplemental uh, aid package. And, and certainly the House of Representatives will demand that. And, and until they accept that reality, the legislation will not pass. Senator. Uh, Senator Graham, thank you for hosting this. Thank you for continuing to bring attention to this. And thank you to all the gentlemen behind me who continue to work diligently to actually secure our border. That's what the American people deserve. But unfortunately, Joe Biden refuses to give that to them. You know, when we look at this emergency supplemental, when we look at this national security supplemental, when we look at what Joe Biden sent us, he put money for the border in there. But do you know what that was? It was stuff that continues to facilitate the mass migration that we see across our border. It was yet more of a magnet to draw more and more people here. Now, I want to tell you who benefits from that, because we have both the national security and a humanitarian crisis on our border. The liberal media has decided to turn a blind eye to the fact that women are being raped on our border, that children are being recycled on our border, that we have laws that allow that to happen and actually that that's what some of these children are going through. Guys, when are you gonna actually call it like it is and not like the liberal left wants you to? The reality is these policies are inhumane. You look at the national security threat of this. You all, we've gone through a week where we had 10,000 come over the border, 10,000 come over the border, 12,000, an all-time high. And to what Senator Thune said, Secretary Jay Johnson under President Obama said 1,000 a day would be a crisis. We're hitting 12. We must secure our border for the safety and security of the American people. I don't want to sit across from another mama who lost their child to fentanyl poisoning. You know, I, I don't want to look out and, and see the travesty that occurs as a result of this. And at the end of the day, when we're putting policies in place to ensure 
that we have national security, the first among all of these must be the border. And y'all need to wake up because Senator Graham asked the questions yesterday. He asked Director Ray about this. He said, I've never seen a time, this is the response, Dr. Director Ray, I've never seen a time where all the threats or so many of the threats are all elevated at exactly the same time. He followed up with, I see blinking lights everywhere I turn. He said a heightened threat environment from foreign terrorist organizations and obviously the ability to exploit, ploit, exploit ports of entry, including our southwest border. Senate Democrats and President Joe Biden are putting the American people last. We need to make sure we create deterrence. We need to make sure we, we create safety. And we must do more for the people here at home. They deserve it. And that is exactly what we are going to continue to fight for. Okay. Actually, I want to start by thanking Senator James Langford, who you all know is on point for negotiating uh, with our colleagues on the other side of the aisle for the work he's doing. Um, and my colleagues here who are also having discussions trying to get to a good outcome. I also want to thank Border Patrol and Customs agents whose uh, morale is at an all-time low. They know that they're overrun. They're dreading going to work every day because they know they're not going to succeed at their mission. This president could end this crisis right now without a single bill being passed. We know he's not going to do that. But we know it can be done because Trump did. This president also knows that the likely nominee for the Republican Party, and many people think the likely president to be sworn in next January is Donald J. Trump. He said on his first day he was going to shut down the border, and I think he means it. And I hope that he would. But you know who's listening to that right now? It's the cartels. And if you don't think that they're going to ramp up their advertising and try to double the flows that are already four times the Trump era flows, then you're crazy. And that's exactly why President Trump's willing to go further, because he knows he's already got a political problem, and it's going to get a lot worse. But let's not talk about the politics where he's already losing. Let's talk about the threat. I'll leave you with this, and I really haven't seen much attention paid to this, but the last time I went to the border at about 1 a.m., I stood on the, on the Rio Grande River, right uh, maybe about five or six feet shy of a fluorescent arrow, with coyotes across the river saying, we're coming. Now, what they meant by that is they're going to send about 50 people over, so Border Patrol will be engaged so that they can bring fentanyl or illicit materials across the border because we simply don't have enough border agents on patrol. They said, we are coming. Now, a hundred, uh, one and a half million people have crossed the border over the last two years that are so-called known gotaways. We know they came here. People don't go back to Mexico. Once they cross the Rio Grande River, they do everything they can. But these people are paying a premium and going through sectors of the border that they're doing everything they can to avoid border patrol. Back to that fluorescent arrow. If they didn't have a bad record, if they weren't somebody who was a threat to the homeland, why on earth would they pay money to go through some of the most dangerous sections of the border to evade apprehension? Why would they do that? Unless they've got a bad history or unless they've got a malign purpose. One and a half million people, let's assume only, let's assume only 10% do. That's 150,000 people, ladies and gentlemen. So I care about Ukraine. <laughs> homeland security. I care about Israel's homeland security, but it would be immoral for me to put those two ahead of what I think is a clear and present threat to our homeland security. Seven senators in 21 minutes. That's a lot <laughs> Questions? So two, one on policy and then one sort of about the meeting this week. Uh, on policy, what exactly do you want on asylum and parole? And then on the meeting, what did you say to General Brown? Did you ask about where he was born? And, and tell us the background why, why you did that and if you thought that was appropriate. Yeah, I asked him, uh, when's the last time you've been to the border? And he said, I was born in Texas. I didn't think that was a good response. <laughs> you know, I like General Brown. You know, he's a great guy. I've got nothing against General Brown. I was frustrated because nobody up there knew anything about the border. So when, you, when I say, when's the last time you get, went to the border, you tell me you are born in Texas, that's not answering my question. So I like General Brown, he's a great guy. But they didn't have one person there to talk about the border. Everything was about Ukraine. Everybody behind me will vote to aid Ukraine if we can get the border right. And then asylum and parole, what would you like? Uh, number one, start with things that we know work. 
if you're past a credible fear standard, your hearing is on average, what, three or four years? Four. four. Stay outside the United States. Once you let people loose into the country, it gets back all over the world. Once you get to America, you never leave. The first thing you need to do to stop the flow or slow it down is make sure that people waiting for the asylum hearing are not released into the country because that incentivizes people to come because once they get released, the belief is you're never going to go back. Stop paroling people en masse. 240,000 people were given blanket parole under a statute that requires an individual analysis based on substantial benefit to the country or undue, unusual humanitarian need. Quit abusing the law. He could do both of those things without one, one bill being passed, has been said. He's chosen to let people loose in the country. He's chosen to abuse the parole law. And his choice has led to a broken border with elevated terrorist threats. Joe Biden has been asleep at the wheel when it comes to the border. You need to wake up, Mr. President, before we get hit. Uh, Senator Murphy was asked downstairs if he thought the record 12,000 encounters at the border on Tuesday was a problem and whether he shares your desire to lower mm -hmm. the number of encounters. He says what the problem is is that there aren't enough resources to process those encounters. So well, these negotiations should end. What, because he doesn't understand, it's hard to fix a problem if you don't understand what it's all about. If you think 12,000 people are coming here because we're under-resourced, that's insane. They're coming here because they believe once they get here, they never leave. Under Biden, once you show up at the border, you're going to stay here forever. Catch and release is why they're coming, Chris. It's not about resources. The policy choices of allowing everybody to apply for asylum to stay in the country uh, to wait for a hearing four years from now has led to a, 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 a surge at the border. Parole is being abused. It is about policy choices, not about resources. Well, and to be fair, the president's supplemental request was Sorry, funding. Like, thank you, yeah. The president's supplemental request was funding to address the symptoms. The symptoms are a New York mayor saying it's out of control. Chicago saying they've had too many people sleeping in tents in cold conditions. He was there to actually request money to address the symptom. We're here to fix the problem. And just to follow up, it would, is DACA amnesty in exchange for nothing, policy? Nothing to incentivize more illegal immigrants. I can't think of a worse idea than to give people legal status. DACA. Right now, legalizing people incentivize more people to come. Maybe I'll be in the next wave of DACA. No legalization. Secure the border to get money for Ukraine, to get money for Israel, and to help Taiwan. Secure the border before we get attacked. Secure the border before the next terrorist attack happens. The, sec uh, the director of the FBI said since October the 7th, a rogues gallery of terrorist groups are urging their members and people who are sympathetic to their cause to attack America. What do you get? You get a safer country. One, I want to ask you guys on the timeline, do you think this deal is possible before the end of the year? And then secondarily, can you speak to just kind of the fundamental disagreement? It seems like obviously you guys are very much about deterrence. You don't yeah. you want to send a different message to people that they don't shouldn't come here, that you're not welcome to be released from this country. But Democrats fundamentally don't want to send that message. They don't want to tell migrants they're not welcome here. They don't want to say you have to stay in these home countries and wait years. I agree with you. So how do you get past that fundamental ideology? they got to change their messaging or we're not going to survive that as a nation. Here's what I tell my Democratic colleagues. You want to please people that literally want the border to stay open in an unlimited fashion. 76% of Americans would like to see the border secured. It's like pulling teeth talking to these guys. What do I get? How can I sell this to my caucus? Here's what you need to sell to your caucus. On your watch, on the Biden administration's watch, the largest amount of legal crossing is occurring daily. We're on track to 10 million legal immigrants in the first in four years of the Biden administration. The threats uh, to the country are all time high. What do you get? You get a secure nation if you work with us. On the timeline, can you talk about, I mean, if you think that these talks are failing, talk about the timeline. If you think the talks are failing, is, is there any practical ability for you to pass something by the end of the year? I don't think the talks are failing. Um, there are conversations going on right now, and um, I'm hopeful they're going to produce a result. But that happens only if the Democrats get serious. And uh, as has been pointed out, I mean, 
the, the Democrat mayor of New York, Eric Adams, is in town today meeting with Chuck Schumer and um, talking about what I'm sure he's been sharing publicly, and that is that this crisis is creating huge problems for him in New York, having to cut education funding, having to close libraries, having to freeze hiring police force. I mean, these, this, this has real consequences, not just for border communities, but for communities all across this country. So it's got to be dealt with, it's got to be fixed, and I think the vote yesterday, if nothing else, sent a, a loud, clear message to the Democrats that that's the case. Now, the White House is going to have to engage, um, particularly if um, Senate Democrats are unwilling to, 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 to do what we're suggesting be done. But this isn't a money issue. You can't throw money at it. These are, these are, this requires changes in policy that change the signals that we're sending to people who are coming across the border illegally and the magnets that are out there that keep pulling them. Um, and, and that's what Senator Langford and, and, uh, and others are, are trying to accomplish. One last question. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator, you mentioned that you wanted the president to get involved. Yes. Would you consider policy changes through executive action instead of the legislative changes? Well, number one, it's a really good question. Mr. President, you may not know it, but you could actually fix this without any of us doing anything. You could go back to the policy of making people wait outside the country for their hearing, which is four years away. And here's what I know works. You're not going to pay $10,000 or $50,000 to get to the United States to remain in Mexico for four or five years. That's why people stopped. So parole, tell your Secretary of uh, uh, Homeland Security, stop paroling people on a mass basis. If you did those two things, it would go down dramatically. Now, about policy fixes, we need statutory changes to make it permanent that the President of the United States has all the power he needs to dramatically reduce the flow to make it lasting beyond his administration. We need a statute. And here's what he needs to understand. If you don't use your executive tools or work with us for a statutory solution, none of us who are supportive of Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan can vote uh, on a supplemental because you're making us pick countries abroad over our own homeland security. And I'll end where I started. I've never been more worried about a terrorist attack on our nation than I am right now. It's just not me saying it. It's all the people in the intelligence community. Mr. President, you are the commander in chief. You have a house, a plane, and a bunch of people working for you. You're in charge of the intelligence community. You're in charge of our nation's national defense. Mr. President, your own people are telling you America's exposed. And I feel like I'm in an episode of 24. The clock is ticking. Can we get there in time? People tell me they're probably already here. You're probably right, some. But after October the 7th, the number of people who want to punish us for helping Israel is through the roof. Every day that Israel has to fight for survival and we have a broken border is a dangerous day for America. Thank you.